Hello there, everybody. I'm Mel Allen, and this is Baseball Collector. Yo and hello. Mike here, Baseball Collector. Happy Monday to everybody. Hope your week's getting off to a good start. Mine has. I got some good mail that I'm going to show you guys. But this week's going to be a great week because on Friday, the Dallas Card Show starts. It's supposed to be huge. Lots of people are going and a lot of people in the hobby and lots of dealers and whatnot. It's going to be a great time. Uh, I, in fact, I think I'm turning into the uh, show Uber. I'm going to pick up Josh, rated rookie here, uh, on Friday from the airport. He's flying in from L.A. and take him. I'm going to go to the show on Friday. I was originally not going to go to the show on Friday. I was just going to go Saturday and Sunday. But I have kind of made a discovery that I want to address quick sooner rather than later at the show. Because I know if you watched my video on the Fort Worth card show, pull this out here. That's what she said. Pull this out. Uh, I bought this Hank Aaron autograph. And I am now pretty convinced that it's not legit. And so anyway, I got a made a deal with the dealer that if it's not real, then I get my money back. And the way I, the reason I think it's not real is because I used my Bible of Baseball Hall of Fame autographs, which is right here. If you don't own this book and you collect Baseball Hall of Fame autographs, what are you waiting on? You need to get on it. But there's the Hank Aaron section right there. And this is a common secretarial for TTMs and people that would send in requesting autographs via the mail. And sure enough, this looks exactly like a secretarial autograph. And I, I kind of had that sneaky suspicion. I'd hoped I was wrong. And turns out, I think it's not legit. So I'm going to take the book. I'm going to take the card, obviously, and, and get my money back. JSA is also on site authenticating. So at worst, on Friday, I can leave the card with JSA, pay the $25, which will suck when they come back and say it's not real and then I have to go to the guy and having spent another $25, but I hopefully he'll just do it with the evidence that I've already accumulated and won't have to go through a lot of rigor more. I don't want the card. I mean, I, I don't think it's legit. So anyway, that's why I'm going Friday and maybe to see some other folks. I know Andy's coming in town Friday and, and then on Saturday, so I come back, I'll come back Friday night, come home. And then Saturday morning, wake up and pick up my special guest, who is Dave, Blue Jacket 66, is flying down. And I'm going to go pick him up at 8 in the morning, I think, as his flight gets in. And then go to take him to the show, which opens at 9.30. Be there all day, because I've got an event that night with Dr. Jim Beckett, James Beckett. And that'll be fun, a dinner thing. And then he and I, then uh, Dave and I will come back here. And he's staying with me. And we'll just probably be up really late looking at cards. And then Sunday, I got some people coming over Monday, Sunday morning. And then uh, Dave and I might go to the show. And then Dave flies out on Monday. So whirlwind weekend. It's going to be awesome. And hoping just to get to see a bunch of people. Yeah, so that's what's up. Uh, let me go through some mail. I did buy a couple of cards from a brand new, not not brand new to the hobby, brand new to me, auction house. So let's flip this around and take a look. Hang on. All right. So got a couple of just like literally boring slabs. I know that's, yeah, who wants to show boring stuff? But I'm kind of one of those guys that I like to show it anyway, because there might be someone out there that digs it. And I'm going to keep... Uh, Dr. Beckett over there, just, he's watching. Check it out what I'm putting up here. So I got a 1987 Topps Dennis Eckersley in a, in a Mint 9. Again, these are all super cheap cards. We're talking less than 10 bucks a piece to get them just for the massive four decade set that I'm doing of every Hall of Famer on their Topps and Bowman's cards. This one goes along with that. It's the 84 tops Phil Necro in a near mint to mint eight, which is again just fine. I paid eight dollars for this, so that'll work just fine for my collection. 
And then all the rest are Hall of Fame autographs. Uh, the first few of these I got off of Mill Creek Sports, who is a huge dealer. And I haven't put these in their proper home yet. These are just in what they came in. But uh, I got this 80 Tops Gaylord Perry, which is a great player era Hall of Famer. In fact, all the rest of the autographs are player era Hall of Famers. Here is a 1965 Tops. Robin Roberts, and not the greatest autograph. That's probably why I got it so cheap, but I'm okay with that. Same is true with this one. I got this one super cheap, so I didn't really mind that the autograph, like if I, I mean, it's there, obviously, but it's already slabbed, and I think this one was 25, maybe? I think that's right, 25 total like shipping and everything and that's why I bought so many things because you know you can get a lot of a big discount on shipping and I mean again I can't even slab it for that you know for 25 bucks so great that's my first I didn't have any of the before those two any Robin Roberts tops autographs that were signed I have a Bowman for him but this guy didn't have any player era card signed and that's hall of fame pitcher bob lemon so shout out to all my cleveland guys like scott and there's so many too many cleveland guys to mention but they'll love the bob lemon autograph and it's the one on the left not the, the right's the normal facsimile autograph for the card the one on the left is the ballpoint autograph right there but again slabbed already this one was about, I think, $34 total. So again, not bad. If you think $25 to get it slabbed and whatnot, the autograph was 9 bucks on a 56 Tops card. And the Tops card beat the hell, but that doesn't matter. I don't really care. I just love having it. All right, these last two are from a new, to me, auction house that I bought, that I bought a couple things from. And, you know... I think I got kind of excited in the moment <laughs> and I probably overpaid for these just a little, not like crazy overpaid, but it's uh Kevin Savage cards and I had never heard of him before. And Brandon from Brandon's baseball cards texted me and said, Hey there, Kevin Savage has a bunch of, you know, hall of fame player era cards that he's, that are in his, he does auctions. It looks like several times a week. And so I, Went and took a look, and there were just a few that I put bids on, and I just happened to win them. Ironically, they went for closer to my higher bid than what I was really hoping to get them for. And but at the end of the day, if you win it, you got to pay for it. What's cool about Kevin Savage auctions, which is I think KevinSavageCards.com or something like that, but if you buy something on his site, there's no buyer's premium. So the hammer price is the hammer price. He charges a little bit for shipping. There's no tax, and you're done out the door. So that makes it pretty convenient. But the first one I got from him is this really cool 1964 Tops Billy Williams. Love that. And I love that it's kind of the older version where they actually put the name of the card on it instead of just trading card. I really prefer that. And this is the first... Uh, player era just like the Bob Lemon first player era autograph I've ever gotten of this player and that's Dandy Don Drysdale for the Dodgers I didn't have any of his stuff signed in terms of his playing day cards this happens to be his last card 69 tops but this was pricey I mean this was after shipping and everything close to 90 bucks so again I probably <laughs> not probably I I overpaid a little but it's a beautiful uh sharpie autograph the ones I see that go cheaper are usually ballpoint pen. They're not nearly as sharp as this autograph, and it usually goes along this open area right here is how he normally signs this card. So to get it signed across the bottom and just, it, it and the, sh the card's pretty sharp too. So no, no wrinkles, no creases, no nothing. So there you go. Uh, that's it. I don't know. I'll probably be doing maybe one more video this week, a golden age of cardboard podcast video other than that i'm just going to be getting ready for the show and 
getting ready to head to the airport multiple times this week. So thanks everybody for watching. Have a good one. Keep collecting.